So my story begins uh, back in 1999. That's when I graduated college uh, at university. And I try to imagine, this is before Facebook, before YouTube, before Friendster, before Napster. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, I was living in New York City and mostly just overwhelmed with the amount of media and culture and advertising like in the city. I don't know how many of you guys live in cities, but there's just a lot of it. Um, and I was fascinated by, by street artists that were doing graffiti and interesting cultural and political messages that were sort of competing with, um, you know, with, with the advertising that was there. And in a moment of perhaps uh, poor judgment, um, I was in the New York City subways and I, I pulled out my pen and actually wrote on an advertisement. It was some uh, NBC ad and I, and I said, I think I said something like, prepare for a cultural overthrow. And by the moment I finished writing, I heard a voice that, that said, uh, what, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, the first time I ever do this, there's a police officer there. It's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. And in my kind of youthful rebellion, I was like, you know, well, you know, regular people can't, you know, we don't have the money to put up things like this. You know, big companies get to put messages in front of people. Well, how can regular people do that? And he was like, uh, that's what the internet's for. <laughs> and he was like, Go do that on the internet. Like, this is not the place for that. Go do that on the internet. And in some respects, I think what I've been doing in this decade since is sort of answering his question slowly. Um, the stories that I'm going to tell you today, I'm going to tell you three stories of, of people that I, I call uh, culture hackers, people that are kind of using the internet to not only organize on the internet, but to, to hack the culture and societies that they're a part of, build into the platform that, that I created, Loud Sauce, to, to make this possible. Um, the question that I ask is like, what would be different? You know, what would our, what would be living, living in our cities, how would, what would be possible if instead of the most of the advertising culture promoting uh, selling uh, of things. What if it was actually uh, more inspiring? What if our billboards actually inspired us towards the future that we actually want? So that's kind of the, the opportunity, I feel. The first story uh, begins uh, in the fall of last year. Many of you probably remember it was the moment in which people started occupying uh, a park in New York City, uh, Occupy Wall Street, that then it grew. And while the the attention about it was very quick and very, um, very strong. The question always was, who are these people? What are they saying? And, and for most people, the way they heard about this movement was not from the voices of the people themselves. It was on the news, uh, the cable news channels. It was mediated by the mainstream uh, media. And so um, a filmmaker, uh, two filmmakers actually, made a, sh a short video that basically was just simple, clear uh, voices from Occupy Wall Street um, that I'm going to play you for for you right now. This is just, you know, not, not a real organization, just a group of companies. I want to see more serious political conversations starting to happen. I want corporations out of the government and I want people back in. I want peace rather than militarization. I want the top wealthiest Americans to be taxed higher and not money good education. I want economic justice. I want a greater regulation of the banks and Americans. I want my kids to have by probably tens of thousands of people, and then somebody found it, a, a political organizer, just independent person, and posted it on uh, Loud Sauce, and within about six days it had raised about $6,000, and then we were able to use that money to put this 30 second video as an ad on national television in the United States. We were able to reach about 3.2 million people um, and put it on Bloomberg Television, ESPN, we even put it on the O'Reilly Factor, this very uh, anti-Occupy Wall Street show. Um, and it was 168 people, mostly spending $25. There was a, a few larger amounts, but mostly spending $25. And beyond the use of the money, and this is, I think, a really important point, it wasn't just money. It was social media uh, attention driving authentic voices forward in the culture. So uh, it, it also resonated with, with, with media. So, articles about it in the Huffington Post, Mashable, a bunch of mainstream news, not just writing about the ad, but writing about this kind of grassroots support for this message. Um, I actually filmed this uh, watching one of the ads with some friends who had also uh, put money into the campaign. And that was something very unique that I think 
uh, you, if you've never experienced it, it's, it's hard to describe, where literally something that you put money into is being played alongside of corporate advertising or you know, big advertising. It's the same if you, if you fund a billboard. There's something really powerful about seeing it there and feeling like literally, you know, I helped make that happen. The second story um, may be more relevant for those of you in Europe or international. Um, everybody remembers uh, earlier this year um, a lot of the tension in Greece around the, uh, the economy and the uh, austerity measures. There was a lot of protests, just general breakdown that was happening. And um, there were some, some Greeks themselves, one that lived in Dubai and a few others that were living in Greece, that decided to do something different about it. There was a lot of frustration and blaming, of course, like there always is um, when there's breakdown in, in society. But instead, these guys um, launched a, a loud sauce campaign to try to get a billboard in Times Square in New York City. So these three guys um, tried to raise $15,000. They ended up raising $20,000 with the intention of putting up a billboard in Times Square to promote traveling to Greece. Because the tourism industry was going way down because everybody's seeing these protests. Nobody wants to go to Greece. It's still beautiful, the beaches are still fine. So it was independent from any organization, independent from any uh, political affiliation. It was just a group of three people and their friends on Facebook and, 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 and social media that were able to successfully raise the money and they put up, we were able to help them get an ad in Times Square for about a month. Every, you know, every, every hour it showed a two minute video. Um, and, and again, it wasn't just about that Placement. That reached about, about 8.9 million people itself. But in addition to that, because of the story of, of crowds coming together to support this important idea to improve their society, it also was able to get on CNN. And internationally, it had, you know, there was news across the world about it. Um, the New York Times wrote about it. These guys actually went to Greek, uh, Times Square and had a press release about it. Um, the other unique thing they did, if you see the actual creative, Again, using the actual crowd itself in the creative. So there was an animation done by a Greek artist that had pioneered this photo mosaic uh, style. And they took all the photographs and the pictures of the funders and brought them into the actual creative. So that the animation you saw promoting Greece was made up of the actual faces of the people who had chipped in to help make this possible. And that's the kind of story that, that, that really is amazing. They even had um, uh, another campaign that was uh, done to put another billboard up in DC, and they now are talking about doing another one in uh, Piccadilly Circus in, in London. Um, they also got national politicians to actually talk about this, because it was like so weird. People on the internet are using money and they're promoting, they were doing more to promote tourism in Greece than the, the National Tourism Board of Greece. And there was like, you know, tension around that. So it's really uh, amazing uh, to see what people are gonna accomplish. The third story I'm gonna tell you is actually more current. It's literally happening right now. Um, but as you know, this is like the moment in, in the United States with the election. And in some respects, money and advertising and politics is part of the problem in the United States. It's like out of control. There's mostly millionaires and you know, very, very wealthy interests that are using uh, money to buy advertising space for, for messages, but mostly just to get elected. That's really the purpose of, of politics and money. And I think what's interesting about social media and the crowds of people uh, online is that they're not just interested in power. You know, they're interested in, in culture and in stories and in meaning. And so in the case of, of what's happening right now, you have, you know, the 2012 election in the United States has barely mentioned climate change, which is, you know, perhaps the number one issue uh, that you know, our planet has to, has to solve for. And so a group of college-age students, these are people in college right now, uh, an organization called Energy Action Coalition, launched a loud sauce campaign on Tuesday of this week to try to raise money to put an ad, a 30-second ad of, of young people from Florida speaking and directly to the candidate saying, what, is your, what are your solutions for the most important issue of our generation? What are you going to leave with, uh, us with? And uh, it's airing this morning and tomorrow morning on MSNBC in Manhattan and, uh, and also on, on, on Comedy Central. And we'll see if we're able to achieve the, the actual uh, purpose, which is to get influence the debates uh, next on Monday. The final debate between uh, Obama and Romney is on Monday night. And the goal is really to make sure, in the context of foreign policy and global issues, will they finally actually be asked about climate change? Will that happen? And, and so, um, <coughs> The, the thing I wanted to comment about this is, if you think back to 1999, you know, when I made that perhaps poor judgment and we're on the board, 
Um, the fact that college age students in the United States today actually have the audacity to, be, to say, I think we can influence a presidential election happening a week from now by getting on the internet, using some people to chip in some money, and pushing this message onto TV. Like, that in of itself is something that we would have never dreamed possible 10 years ago. And particularly, I think, in countries that are not as uh, evolved in this whole crowdfunding thing. You saw it with Greece. You do one or two of these, it, it, it has more impact than you think. Um, we, like I said before, there's something about groups of people coming together with not only money, but money plus their social currency, plus their relationships and the trust that they've built in their lives using uh, online, and being out in the open about it. You know, that's a key difference. The, the, the millionaires and the wealthy people that are trying to influence politics in the United States are mostly standing behind the names of, of these organizations no one's heard of. But in the, in the social age and in the crowdfunded advertising uh, wave, we see more people are actually proud to say, yeah, this is, I put my $25 towards this because this is a message that I believe in. This is, this is actually part of who I am as a citizen or as a, as a community member. And so the fact that people are actually not hiding behind but standing with their values and their money and, and voting for the kinds of uh, ideas and the kinds of culture that they want we think is, is powerful. So far, Loud Sauce has reached uh, 33 million people with crowdfunded advertising, and we're still super early in this, in this era. And we're really excited to actually have more international use of our platform. We've mostly been used by uh, inside the United States so far, but we're really looking forward to, to see what happens next. Um, it's so far, the stories I told you today were more uh, political in nature, but we've had people, we've had artists use our platform, documentary filmmakers, essentially people who make and want to share culture. Videos are particularly powerful, um, but basically anybody that, that wants to spread ideas that matter to, to them either at a national level or at a local level or at an international level. Um, we're, really, we're really excited to, to see what happens. So just in closing, I think I invite you to ask yourself and to think about your own communities and your own countries and your own uh, ambitions for the vision for, for what you want to see. Like, what would you actually spend money to help amplify the world? Thanks a lot.